Hi, my name is Robin Temple, and I'm an Air Force veteran, um, and uh, I'm a malpractice survivor from the VA. Um, this all started because in January of 2007, I went for a VA day surgery for an ovary removal called an ovarectomy. Should have been a simple in and out, but the surgeon took out a piece of my colon, left it open, and sewed me up and sent me home and told me I was fine. And for three days we called his office and said, it's not fine, it's horrible. And for three days their office told, told me that because I have PTSD, it was all in my head. Well, it wasn't all in my head. Um, I was septic and I was dying. And in fact, I did die spent some time in a coma on life support and had to have a colostomy among other things and be resected various times and the follow-up surgeon uh, that the VA sent me to was their head of internal medicine at the VA in Togus that's in Augusta, Maine. It's the only VA hospital in the state. So we went there and I saw the head of surgery, Dr. Bosart. And the fellow who originally did this horrible thing to me is Robert Grober. He is a physician who does women's medicine, or did, at Eastern Maine Medical Center in Bangor, Maine. And I later found out, after my tragedy, that he butchered countless hundreds of women. But the VA used him because lowest bitter wins, right? And I didn't get to choose. You know, they say, well, it's not our fault. You know, you, you went to him. Well, I wasn't paying the bill. I couldn't have afforded to go anywhere else. So, there I was at the VA in Togus, and I had a colostomy, and I told him that my pain was still terrible in my right leg, in my groin. For 15 months and five visits, he, he had me come an hour and a half each way to Augusta from Bangor and I would go have family bring me and he'd lift my shirt up in the waiting room and he would say you're so together funny get over it you have PTSD finally in an emergency room in Boston at the VA in Jamaica Plain I saw an internist named Vivian Sanchez she saw me for five minutes and said, you have two huge hernias. Let me send you for an MRI, which should have happened a year and a half ago. The MRI confirmed that, yes, indeed, I had two huge hernias coming out of my wound sites, as well as I had a terrible ovary with tumors on it. Well, when she told me that I had an ovary, I said, that's not possible. The VA took that. At least they got that right, but they didn't. And it had moved to my lymph nodes in my right groin. So, now I had problems there that were pretty severe. So I had to have surgery for that. So it took a team of surgeons now because I needed GYN and an internist to try and unravel the mess in here. So, a year later from that event, I had more hernias and the surgeon put in a sheath, the one that the government recommended. Well, that sheath cut my bladder in half and reinfected my abdomen with my urine to be septic again. So she, six months later, took that sheath out and tried another sheath, again, recommended by the FDA. Both of those sheaths were later recalled. That sheath attached itself to the scar tissue in my diaphragm and rolled up, pulling my intestines with it. In the process of all this, my left kidney couldn't take the beating anymore from the infection and the meds. And so I was suffering from renal failure. And that was pretty scary, and I lost half of my left kidney. Following all that, I found another lump in my breast 
I'd had one in 97, but I'd been treated in Boston for that. Well, this one was another one, and I have the genes, so now I have a double mastectomy and lymphectomy, as the bean bags attest. So I'm a jigsaw puzzle. I have had 13 surgeries since 07 and counting. I have two more hernias now. The only thing holding my intestines in, because my lower abdominal muscles died. So the only thing holding my guts in is cadaver skin. That's it. And it only lasts three to five years. Well, I'm at the fifth year this January 014. And where do I live? Well, I lost my house two years after this tragedy because I couldn't afford someone to take care of me full time and I couldn't afford to drive 500 miles each way to a hospital that might save my life and I couldn't climb three stories anymore. I can barely climb one. I get around with a walker and a scooter, a cane, but I don't get around much. What I have from the government for all this is an endless pile of paperwork telling me that it's not their fault, it's mine. They still haven't taken responsibility for anything. All right? But I get to take responsibility for what they've done. This is my day. Every day. And how did I get benefits? Well, let me tell you how I got benefits. I was active duty. I got my top secret security clearance. I was so proud. I was working and I loved it. And I got a boss who decided he had a personal interest in me. And I went to the chaplain and he had nothing for me. I went to my boss's boss, a woman, who told me, go along with it. That's how it works. And I got reprimanded. I lost a promotion twice. And then finally, he did rape me. He scheduled me for a night duty with him alone, in a vault, all right? And for 12 hours, he assaulted me. After the assault, I walked to the local on-base clinic, and I said, I need a rape kit, I need medical attention, and I need to see a rape counselor. You know what they did is they called my boss, who said that, I went nuts in the vault, shut off all the cameras, which I don't have the authority to do, and uh, I went psychotic. So I was wrapped in a straitjacket, and I was driven in an ambulance to Lackland Air Force Base and locked in a small, tiny room with no clothing, nothing but a paper Johnny, for 115 days. My family thought I was dead. All my belongings were somehow confiscated and came up missing. All right? I had nothing. And those 115 days, every morning and every evening, I was administered overdoses of Haldol and lithium, illegal dosages. Those dosages caused me grand mal seizures every morning and every night for 115 days. And what they wanted was for me to sign one sheet of paper that said I made up my rape and that it was my fault that I joined the military mentally defective and I wouldn't do it. My mother called a senator and a congresswoman and that's how I got out. I got my honorable discharge but there was no honor in anything that happened to me. My my recourse, once I was out, what do I do? I knew I needed counseling, but I couldn't afford it and work and try to function. I wasn't all that functional. I now had PTSD, or, and now they call it MST, military sexual trauma. Well, guess what? About every veteran that's a woman I've met has it, okay? If you served, 80% or more of you were raped. But that's another story. I went to the VA and I said, I need help with this. Here's my DD-214. Here's my problem. You know what they did? They had 
me escorted out. You're already reeling. You're already suffering. And they threw me out. I went to another VA in Boston. And the same thing. I got dragged out. Because they didn't have a code, mind you. This is the 80s. They didn't have a code for rape. Too bad. They threw me out. Well, it wasn't until 1995 that I finally got someone to listen. And I did get benefits. And I thought, well, now I can take care of me, get better, have some quality of life. Right? Here's my quality. I just like some kind of compensation. And where do I live? I live in a tiny little camper. That's it. My home for almost four years. That's me. Okay? The girl who was a health nut, crunchy granola, never ate anything junky, never took a pill, never smoked, nothing. And these teeth? I'm allergic to penicillin. That's called tetracycline staining. But it's not anything I did. So, in closing, I wrote this. It's called, I'm Not Your Soldier. I'm not your soldier. Your veteran. Your bitch. I joined to get older. To get out of the ditch. I thought serving my country would make me worthy. But I learned that my country doesn't serve me. So now I'm not your veteran. Not yours to defend. To you I'm invisible. So you can pretend. Pretend that laws are unbroken. That rape is a lie. My suffering unspoken. You'd rather I die. So I'm not your VA malpractice. Your violated vet. You can sleep easy until it's your kids they get. So think on that. Okay? No one should serve a country that doesn't acknowledge them.